so far we've only focused on the binary classification problem, meaning we're only building models that tell the difference between one class and another class. But the reality is that the world is filled with uh, problems that uh, actually have multiple uh, possible classes. So if we're looking at an image, we might want to tell the difference between a dog and a cat and a horse and an elephant, etc. And so we'd like to be able to solve this type of a problem, um, but with uh, any sort of classifier that draws a surface across some sort of an end space, in our case, we're drawing a, a hyperplane uh, with the SGD classifier, we necessarily have a binary type of an approach. But the question is, can we uh, make use of this mechanism in order to build a multi-class classifier? And, and the, the uh, answer is yes. And, and the approach is to not build just a single classifier, but to actually build a whole set of binary classifiers. And then when we're presented with a novel input, we ask each of the classifiers what its answer is. And then we aggregate those answers together to produce a single answer for the aggregate classifier. So let's look at this in drawing form. So I'm drawing a feature space here. Call that uh, x0 versus x1. And before we were dealing with uh, telling the, the difference between a set of positive examples and a set of uh, negative examples. And now what we're going to do is add one or more additional classes. In this case, I'm going to add a set of a set of O's here to indicate this third class. So looking at this feature space and where the pluses and minuses and O's are scattered, we could imagine actually drawing a, uh, a set of decision surfaces here. So here's one line segment uh, that ends at this point, and then another one picks up from here and say goes in this direction and another one heads off in this direction here. And with, with this set of line segments, we can separate these three different classes. So how do we go about taking a set of binary classifiers and translating it into a classifier that solves this particular problem? So one possibility is that we, that we focus not on all of the input samples, but we only focus on pairs of classes uh, at once. So for example, let's, let's imagine building a classifier that uh, makes a distinction between all of the pluses and, and all of the O's. So that BS is short for versus. So, what I can do is build a, a, a line segment, uh, sorry, a line through this feature space that makes this distinction between the, uh, the pluses and, and the O's. So anything on the left-hand side is plus, anything on the, the right-hand side is O's. All right, let's now take another pair. So we'll do pluses versus minuses. And I can draw uh, a line through, say, this space here that separates all of the pluses from the minuses. And then finally, let's pick uh, a blue curve here. Let's build a model that makes a distinction between the, the O's versus the, the negatives. And if I draw a line, say, along here, then that perfectly separates the, the O's from, from the negatives. So now imagine that I've, I present this model with a novel, a, a novel point. So that's the light green that I just filled in there. And we want to classify that. So what the, the green classifier is going to do 
is it it's going to so that 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 made a distinction between pluses and O's since this new point falls on the right hand side of that line it's going to give a vote for an O for the purple line it falls above the line, so it gives a, a vote for the pluses. And for the blue line, uh, because it falls uh, above and to the right of the blue line, it's going to give a vote for the O's. So, so now we have uh, two votes for O's, one vote for plus, and no votes for minus. So the aggregate output is going to be uh, O. And this sort of matches our intuition, uh, given our original uh, set of, uh, of orange lines, which are sort of covered up at this point. But that new point sort of falls a little bit closer to all of our purple O's than it does the pluses or the minuses. So what I've just presented is an approach called one versus one. And, uh, and what we do is literally walk through every possible pair of uh, classes and build a binary classifier that distinguishes just between those two classes. In order to do this, we need order n squared uh, classifiers. So as n starts to get big, uh, it does get quite expensive to, to build all of the classifiers that we need for this. We are also making an implicit assumption here that uh, if, I, if I give a, a new uh, input that belongs in, in truth to a particular class, that any classifier that, that distinguishes between class A and class B, where A and B do not correspond to the, the ground truth label of that input point, we, we're going to make an assumption that those two uh, classes, uh, the, 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 the point falls essentially randomly between those two classes. The, in other words, there aren't any biases for, for one class versus another. And in practice, sometimes we can make that assumption. In other scenarios, this is not necessarily a good assumption. So we have a, uh, our set of input samples again here that we're using for training. And uh, another distinct, an, another approach that we can take is one where we make a distinction between one class and all other classes. So let's go ahead and, and construct uh, some of those uh, curves. So we'll start with, with green. We'll, we're going to distinguish green versus uh, O's and negatives. So for that, what do we want is a line that cuts, that cuts like this. It's not too different than the, the line that we had running along that same uh, region before. Uh, the next is to build a line, say, of O's versus the others, which, is, which are plus and minus. So for that, we need a line that does something along uh, these lines. And then finally, we need to make a distinction between the negatives and the pluses and O's. This particular case, there isn't a, a perfect solution. Uh, I'm going to draw in a solution that sits right about here. And depending upon what our learning metrics are, we might uh, make so somewhat different choices there. So here I'm, I'm only misclassifying three of the training points. Okay. so. Let's go ahead and ask what happens in this scenario as to uh, what a training, a, a new point, um, how it might be classified. So let's, let's go ahead and put uh, our new point there, at the orange star. For, for the green line, this orange star falls uh, above and to the left, and that means that uh, that, that we're uh, giving a, a plus answer. For the purple line, this line falls 
uh, to the uh, to the right and and upper, and uh, so it gets an O. And for the blue line, we fall uh, to the uh, to the upper uh, region of that blue line. Uh, so it actually votes for for this one here. So in this particular case, the the uh, answer for the aggregate is is a little bit unclear uh, because plus and O receive the same number of votes. But we we could express this probabilistically by saying 0.5 for plus, uh, 0.5 for O, and for minus we we assign a zero probability. And if we were forced to actually select one of those classes in a, a crisp prediction problem, then we, we'd have to pick randomly between those two. If I move the star a little bit, let's do that. We'll make, the, make a brown star over here. So it's not too far away from the orange star. Um, the only answer that I'm changing here is the answer that the green line gives us. So we would end up with uh, with this answer here and not this answer over here. In this particular case, the aggregate is going to see one, uh, one vote for an O and, uh, and then uh, zero votes for plus and minus. I'm focusing on the votes that are tallied on the left hand side of uh, of, of this part of the diagram. So I'm focused right in here. So in this case, the aggregate answer ends up being uh, O. And, and that matches our, our intuition nicely. So this particular approach is something called one versus all. And the process is that for each class, we, we create a classifier that makes a distinction between that class and all other samples that we have in our training set. In this case, we need only n different classifiers. We don't need order n squared. Uh, the challenge in, in this case can be that the decision surfaces might need to be a bit more complex in order to really capture the nature of the data. We actually saw that in this example that I was constructing on the fly. So, so there's definitely a, a trade-off here between taking a, a one versus one approach uh, as compared to a one versus uh, all approach, where, uh, where one is uh, less expensive, but requires more complicated decision surfaces, uh, and the other is uh, more expensive, but doesn't require as, many, as complex a decision surface. I want to say one thing about the uh, SGD classifier that we've already talked about and, and gone through some examples with. Um, this particular Python class actually automatically detects when it is faced with a non-binary classification problem. And it does this by looking at the total number of uh, classes that are presented in the desired output uh, variable uh, during the fitting process. Unless you force it to you choose one of the approaches, it will dynamically make a choice between the 1v1 and the 1v all uh, approach. And, and the fundamental deci deciding uh, point here is how many classes are there. If we have a small number of classes, it prefers to, to take the one versus one approach. And as the number of classes gets larger and and squared classifiers starts to get too big, then it switches over to the one versus all uh, approach. Okay, so, so that's the, the general introduction to the, this approach. And next up, we're going to do a little bit of code uh, to illustrate uh, some of uh, the operation of the SGD classifier.